Okay, in this video, we're actually going to have an example of taking the inverse Laplace transform that will use pretty much everything that has happened in the previous videos. So suppose that I find a signal that has a Laplace transform. Oh, where'd that color come from? Oh, I guess we'll go with it. 5s plus 30 over s cubed plus 5s squared plus 17s plus 13. Okay, and I want to take the inverse Laplace transform of this. Clearly, this is complicated enough that I can't just look at it and see what uh, I would get from the tables. So what I'm going to do is a partial fraction expansion, and again, because I know how to do this in MATLAB, I'm going to use MATLAB. You can do the partial fraction expansion by hand if you want to. Uh, you could probably get uh, Wolfram Alpha to do it for you, but I'm going to use MATLAB. So we take, we bring up MATLAB. Our numerator coefficients are going to be 5, because that's the coefficient in front of s, and 30. That's the constant coefficient. Our denominator coefficients are going to be 1. That's the coefficient in front of s cubed. 5, which is the coefficient in front of s squared. 17, which is the coefficient in front of s. And 13, which is the constant coefficient. Then we're going to say r comma p comma k is equal to residue of b comma a. And hit return. And there we have our, our uh, values for the um, partial fraction expansion. OK, so we've got our values for our partial fraction expansion. And now we need to try to make some sense out of this, figure out what this actually is giving us. So uh, let's look at, again, we have R1 over S minus P1 plus R2 over S minus P2 plus R3 over S minus P3, okay? So we have two complex um, coefficients, uh, this one R1, this one R2. And you'll notice that R2 is indeed the uh, complex uh, conjugate of R1. The imaginary part has a different sign. Uh, this represents P1 and this represents P2. And again, you'll notice that uh, P1 and P2 are complex conjugates of each other. We then have an R3 and a P3. You'll notice that R3 and P3 are real, which is good because there's no R4 and P4, which you know, if R3 and P3 were complex, we'd be in a mess. So let's look at how to take the inverse transform of R1 and R2. You'll recall from the previous video, we defined R1 to be A plus JB, okay? So A in this case, looking at what I have for R1, so A is going to be minus 1.25, B is going to be minus 0.4167, okay? Now P1 is equal to minus alpha minus j omega, okay? So if we look at P1, this is minus 2 which is the same as minus alpha, which says then that alpha is equal to 2, okay? Minus j omega, 
gives me um, gives me this term. Something seems a little fishy about this. We'll keep going though. So we have omega is equal to uh, minus three. Okay. So now all we have to do is plug in uh, for sines and cosines. Uh, we've got amplitudes, we've got uh, the exponential decay bits, and we've got the frequency bits. Uh, and that will actually give us in the inverse transform associated with these two terms. So if we do that, we'll have 2a. So 2a is, uh, well, I'll just write it out, 2a e to the minus alpha t cosine omega t u of t plus 2b e to the minus alpha t sine omega t u of t. That's where we are. Okay, and so we know that A has this value, B has this value, alpha has this value, omega has this value. If we plug those in, 2 times A is going to be uh, minus 2.5 e to the minus 2t cosine minus 3t u of t plus 2b, which is going to be plus 2 times 0.4167. So I'll do this in my head to make sure I get it wrong. So this is going to be a negative 0.8334 e to the minus 2t uh, sine minus 3t u of t. Okay. So, um, to make some space, I'll get rid of these guys now. And there's a few last things we need to do to tidy up. So, we'll continue up here. And we'll say that this is minus 2.5 e to the minus 2t. The cosine of a negative number is the same as the cosine of the number, so I can write this as cosine of 3t u of t. That's because cosine is an even function. And then I'm going to have minus 0.8334 e to the minus 2t sine of minus 3t. Sine is an odd function, so sine of minus 3t is going to be minus sine of 3t. That minus sine is going to cancel this guy out, so I'm going to have plus 0.8334 e to the minus 2t sine of 3t u of t. Okay, so that has given me the uh, terms associated with uh, these two terms, it gives me this cosine and the sine terms. So I'm left with just uh, taking the inverse transform of this chunk. We'll do that in this beautiful light blue. Uh, R3 is 2.5. P3 is minus 1. So this becomes 2.5 over S plus 1. The inverse transform of that guy is 2.5 e to the minus 1t u of t. So there you have it. I've computed an inverse Laplace transform. I've used all the uh, tricky bits that we figured out in terms of cosines and sines, and uh, it wasn't that hard. So that concludes this video.